Hello and welcome again to the uh, Windows Server Administration course. Now we are going to work on the installation of WDS or Windows Deployment Services on the virtual machine that you must have already created by now and that is the Windows Server 2012 R2 virtual machine. In addition to that, I ask you to install Windows Server 2016 as a VM on your Oracle VirtualBox Manager. By now, you should have those two available. Uh, the screen will look similar to what you're seeing right here. Of course, uh, in my case, I have additional VMs that are depicted here on the left pane that I am pointing at, the left pane of the window. But don't worry about that. As long as you have VirtualBox Manager as the uh, application that you install you should be fine and as long as you have one Windows 2012 server and one Windows Server 2016 then you should be more than okay so let me start by uh, booting up the Windows 2012 R2 server and that is going to open up in a couple of seconds It's going to go through the uh, boot up of the uh, server it is here so it is in uh, booting up Windows Server 2012 R2. As soon as I get to the um, signing screen, what I need to do is I need to click on Input, Keyboard, Insert, Control, Alt, Delete, and then enter the password that I use when I when I when I was uh, installing the uh, server virtual machine. I don't have to worry about this shutdown message because I terminated my server earlier without any notice. Um, so I'm going to select system and un unresponsive. Okay, this is not a production server, so I don't have to worry about that. And this is the first screen that you're going to see. So a couple of recommendations for you. If you are planning on uh, using this VM for, for a few days or a few weeks, which is the case for, for the course that you are taking with me, uh, I advise for you to uh, install the guest edition CD image. All you need to do is click on device and then click on insert guest edition CD image. Then you go to Windows Explorer, you will see the D drive as the virtual box guest editions. Right click on that and uh, select install or run application. Then click on next, next, install and that is going to install the additional software that is needed to enhance the experience of uh, this VM for you, meaning the display is going to look better, the mouse is going to uh, respond faster and the keyboard will also uh, respond faster. So uh, it's asking me to reboot, I'm going to say finish, it's going to reboot the system, it's going to be really quick so that is not going to be a concern. I get ready by clicking on input, then keyboard, and as soon as I, as I see the Windows message, I click on Insert, Control, Alt, Delete. I type in the password. And now I should be uh, back on the Windows Server 2012 R2 Windows screen. So I'm going to, for viewing purposes, I'm going to adjust the window size. So this is full size for you and this is what you get. Now, the, by default, you're going to get Server Manager as the application that is going to show up every single time you boot up uh, a Windows Server 2012 uh, installation. Uh, you can disable that, but that is not the topic of this discussion. So by default, you're going to get Server Manager quickly opened as soon as you log into your server. So all you need to do here is we are going to add a role or a feature. That is what we are doing as far as installing Windows Deployment Services or WDS, which is the next step of our journey. As part of chapter one, we are discussing WDS and how to install WDS on this server that we created. So we are going to make sure that uh, we uh, install WDS. So this is the add roles and features wizard. This window will open up with a default message. Don't need to worry about that. Click on next. Here it is asking us if we want to install a role-based or feature-based installation or a remote desktop services installation. We go with the first one, the role-based or feature-based installation. We click on next. Here it's asking us 
to select a server from the server pool. Now, in a real production environment, there will be a bunch of servers that will come up on this part of the window. In our case, we are in a lab environment, not production environment, so we don't have to worry about selecting the server. The first one that comes up is the one that we have to use for this installation, which is the VM that we are using. In, in the case of uh, your installation, it will be the only VM that you will see as well. So then click on Next. And now it's asking us what server role you want to install. So in our case, we already know we are installing Windows Deployment Services or WDS. So we put a check mark here. As soon as we do that, this window will open up and it's telling us, well, if you want to install Windows Deployment Services, you will also need the management tools to be able to manage WDS and the remote server administration tools as well. So we go with the uh, recommendations that are needed and we click on add features and then we click on next. Now, is there a need for additional uh, features to be installed? There, are, there is no need for us, so we click on next. And then this message is important for you to, uh, to read and understand because this is what we are actually doing. We, can, uh, we are installing Windows deployment services to be able to install operating systems remotely. By now, you should have read uh, the chapter one of the textbook that we are using for the course that we are taking. So it will be important for you to connect the dots and understand that WDS or Windows Deployment Services is used to install and configure Microsoft Windows operating systems remotely on computers that are not physically located near us. So companies use this whenever they need to deploy a new operating system to hundreds of computers across the organization, across the company that uh, the technician is working for. So rather than going one by one and installing the operating system on one, uh, computed at a time, you're able to deploy the new operating system to hundreds of uh, devices remotely. So that is one of the main uses of WDS or Windows Deployment Services. Now, if you want to make a, the installation uh, zero touch, meaning not sending any technicians out because everything is done remotely, you will need to use a combination of Windows Deployment Services, number one, Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, number two, or MDTK, and SCCM or System Center Configuration uh, Manager. So those three uh, pieces of Microsoft software are needed in order to do a more robust uh, deployment of a new operating system in a production environment for a large organization. So we click on next here. There are two options for us to select from. We are going to select both because we need deployment server, which is the minimum requirement, and also the transport server, which gives us the ability to do multicasting uh, installation. And you should read more about that in your textbook and then click on next. And then we go to uh, select restart the destination server if required. Most likely we will not be prompted to restart or it will not restart on its own. And then click on install. As soon as we finish with installation, which shouldn't take more than a, a few seconds, uh, we are going to click on close and we will be able to have WDS already installed on our server VM or virtual machine. So the installation succeeded on our server. We click on close. And now just to verify, we can see that WDS is selected here and we can see that WDS has been added to our server. However, we will not be able to manage WDS from this screen. Uh, this is different from installing software on a desktop computer or a laptop computer. As soon as you click on the uh, or you finish the installation of the software, you can quickly open the software application and it will uh, be uh, available to you via the graphical user interface. With WDS, uh, we are working on a server. So in order to access the uh, WDS uh, role that we installed, we are going to have to select on tools and then from the tools menu under server manager, we are going to select Windows Deployment Services or WDS. So as soon as we select that, this management console window will open up. We maximize it just so it's easier for us to read. And then we see that the servers uh, that are listed here 
Uh, we only have one because we are working in a virtual environment, in a lab environment, so uh, we only have one server installed. So there is a yellow exclamation mark which is clearly telling us that WDS is not configured. So we right click on that server, which is the server that we are accessing, the VM that we are accessing, and then click on configure server. Now this window will open up, giving us the option to configure Windows deployment services uh, for us. This is a screen that I need you to pay attention to if you want to have additional information for the uh, quiz for this particular chapter that we are working on. So pay attention, pause the video for a few seconds and make sure that you read the information here because there are important requirements in order to get WDS to work in a production environment and they are listed here. Uh, DHCP, uh, DNS and TFS. So we click on next. Uh, this option is important for you guys to be aware of integrated with Active Directory or a standalone server. You cannot select both. You need to choose one or the other. For our case and to mimic the environment that we are in, since we haven't deployed Active Directory in our lab environment, which is the Oracle VirtualBox environment that you're working in, uh, we are going to select standalone to remain truthful to the environment that we are working in and then click on next. Here, the uh, path in which uh, the installation files for any new operating system that we are trying to deploy will be hosted. Uh, this is the option that we have to select that folder that we are going to use for the remote installs. We are going to go with the uh, default of C remote install. Now, we are going to get a warning that it is not recommended for us to use the C drive because C has the operating system uh, that we are using for Windows Server. Uh, but this is a lab environment, so we don't have to worry about that. So we click on yes. And here, the option that I want you to select is respond to all client computers and we are going to require administrator approval for unknown computers. This is in the case of you being in a production environment and having, let's say, 40 different desktops that are trying to connect to your server, the server that we are accessing right now. If one of those 40 systems is requesting the Windows 10 installation to be installed and is trying to grab the installation files from your server, uh, by putting a check mark here, what we are doing is we are saying, well, before you actually have those files uh, workstation, I need to approve as the administrator. So this is giving the administrator the option to either approve or deny the request that is made by any particular desktop or workstation that is in your environment trying to uh, grab your Windows 10 installation files and use them for a new operating system install. So we click on next and that is going to uh, install or, or finish the configuration of your WDS. So I'm going to unche uncheck this message, add images to the server now and just click on finish. And this is what has been installed as part of WDS, this set of folders that you see on the right. Now, you don't have anything available for your workstations yet because you haven't added any install images or boot images yet. So I'm going to do just one, the boot images installation. And you right click on boot images and you select add boot image here. Uh, and then we click on browse. And then you should be able to find the boot image if you have made it available to your VM. And in order to make it available to the VM, you need to do this. You need to go on the machine settings and then go on the share folders and make sure that you share one of the folders on your computer with the VM so you're able to access any WIM files that you may have available for your server. In my case, I'm going to share the downloads folder on my host computer and then select the folder and click on OK. But before that, I'm going to auto mount and make it permanent. So I'm going to click on OK and then OK again. And from here, this is the downloads folder that I selected and I have a boot that WIM file and I'm going to click on OK and then next and next and next. And that is going to add a boot image to my WDS deployment on my Windows Server 2012. So I'm going to click on finish and the boot image is right here for Windows 10. 
Uh, that concludes the installation of WDS and the addition of a boot image. You can do the same for the install image by right clicking and adding an install image. In a different video, I'm going to show you how to find the boot.wim file and the install.wim file from a Windows 10 ISO download that you can perform from the Microsoft Evaluation Center. Thank you very much for joining. Until next time.